We had total chaos when round in this top corner actually. I went pretty close to the shallow areas. It came like a big, big wave, almost breaking over the boat canal. This is Malou, sailing somewhere on the seven seas. And this is me, our captain, trying to steer out into the unknown to be able to find that one very special spot. Consider subscribing and welcome on board. Standing in the middle of nowhere, just waiting for a bus. It's going to take me in that direction towards a little place called Fjordgård, which is actually just across the fjord from Hose. But if you're going the road, it's, it's actually quite far and there's a lot of different kind of ways and tunnels and stuff like that, which, is, which would be a little bit hard to hike. It's going to be a little hike today, get Fjordgård down there. Who would say you could probably see that as well. But I'm heading up in that direction towards Segla, which is about 600, 650 meters above sea level. Managed to sneak away a little bit from all the wind. It's just blowing super much here. Got up on this ridge right here. You got another fjord down here, just a very steep hill or I don't know, cliff going straight down from here more or less into the sea and then right up here you have Sigla but uh, I think I'm gonna have to head back down actually today because it's blowing so much up here and I believe further up it's just gonna be like an inferno of snow so yeah this is the view that we're getting today not too bad I guess. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys now for a moment. I mean I'm usually completely honest but the thing is that now I've been out sailing for a couple of months alone more or less all the time and uh, it's actually getting a little bit lonely or lonely but also quite boring to be sailing alone here and uh, I mean, it's very nice and beautiful surroundings and everything, but sailing alone for a long time, it it gets pretty old, to be honest. I don't know, I, I, I like to sail alone for a while, but I think that I like to sail together with other people more, basically, and just go to different places together with other people and experience them together so i don't know i'm i'm definitely gonna continue alone to tromsø of course but uh, after tromsø i don't know if i'm gonna be sailing too much alone anymore I, I don't know maybe i've changed my mind after i've been there for a couple of months but right now i just feel like i want to hang out with people more and uh, be less alone on my boat <laughs> So one reason that I didn't go with Malu to the Fjordgård is that it has no dock basically, no protected anchorage at all. But here they're actually building, looks like a breakwater right here and then one here as well. Not really sure if that's going to be in harbor or if it's going to be like, like these things, like small ponds sort of. Uh, maybe it's going to be breakwater for an harbor, maybe not. We'll, we'll see what's going to happen. Just hanging out in this little shelter before taking the bus back to Husseri. Norway are really good at just building shelters and stuff like that and trails for hiking and more or less anywhere you go in Norway there's gonna be nice shelters or hut or something like that open for more or less everybody. It's good to have somewhere to just hide out and be able to be a little bit cozy away from the wind, away from the snow. Finally, the wind has calmed down a little bit and turned. So this morning we're leaving Hirse and we're gonna keep heading north towards Qualia and a place called Lauklimes, which um, which is a place where I used to work like 10 years ago or something. I worked there for three summers as a sport fishing fishing guide. So it's gonna be really exciting to see that place and um, finally go sailing again. It's been a few days now, so. Really looking forward to 
get some wind in the sails. We're motoring out of the fjord right now. We're just heading for this beak right here. We're gonna be turning around that and we're like a 9 degrees turn. And hopefully gonna get some wind when we get outside so we're able to shut up the engine and start doing a little bit of sailing. Big rain weather just came in here with a lot of wind right in our nose. I'm sitting here under the doghouse just coasting myself and keeping away from the rain basically. Still got like a mile or more or something to, to go to the peak. And uh, now we're turning towards uh, towards Kvala. Uh, we're gonna be passing a quite wide fjord as well called Malangen which is the big fjord heading in towards Tromsø more or less. But right now we're not going to Tromsø, we're gonna go to Kolea and uh, eventually we're going to Tromsø. We had total chaos when round in this top corner actually. I went pretty close to the shallow areas. It came like a big, big wave, almost breaking over the boat kind of. Quite exciting, but now we're running with the wind. So now it's just way more calm way more nice it's it's so interesting with sailing because you get all these like you get tossed around one second and everything is miserable and then the other minute it's like oh very nice and you're going with the wind and you're just enjoying yourself and listening to music and whatnot it's just huge contrasts and i guess that's what makes sailing so fascinating kind of leaving beautiful senya behind Wind pilot is staring quite nicely. The wind is shifting a little bit, like all the time. So it's really hard for it to steer right now, but actually doing quite a good job thinking about the conditions. The wind speed is also changing all the time. So that's also making it definitely harder, but uh, we're definitely keeping a good course. Gonna head just starboard from this island up here. I like it, 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 oh, rocking all over the world. Let's go to the front of the boat. It just feels, if you're at the front of the boat, it just feels like it's going way fast. If you're sitting right here, by the Genoa, the water is just splashing. We're not going super fast now, just like four and a half knots, five maybe. But that, that water is splashing around here, and uh, it's just a nice, nice feeling of speed. Walking all over the world. Right here, I've been fishing so many times for big cold fish, just countless of times. More or less in the middle of Malangen here, where it goes down in the middle of the fjord, it's about 500 meters deep. And right here, it's just going straight down from like 10 meters towards 300 meters, which is a really good spot for big cold fish. Fast spinning, just a lot of action filled fishing. So much fun. At the moment, I don't know if there's any cold fish left here, but uh, they're mostly here during the summer. But maybe, maybe there's a few left. It's a little bit too windy to fish right now, though. This island right here is called Somare, which means summer island, basically. And uh, you can definitely tell why, because there's like so many sandy beaches all over the place. And it's a really low island as well, which is of course a little bit strange out here because all the other surrounding islands is pretty high it doesn't really make sense for this island to be very low like this one but uh, it's very special very nice like sandy bottom crystal clear water and uh, a lot of nice anchorages for sure gonna definitely try and go here like later next summer or spring or something like that just fishing snorkeling diving and uh, staying on anchor somewhere in this area. Luckily, we have the current with us when passing through the sound. Could actually be quite a bit of current here. It's not really high, very high and low tide at the moment. So current is not super strong. It's nice to have like, I don't know, half a knot, something like that in our back. Sailing into the Catfjord right now, got uh, 
loveliness right here my destination not far to go at all and I spoke to Marcus the other day and he said that they're seeing um, killer whales or orcas in here quite lately so I'm having a good look out now to see if I can see any I've never actually seen any in my whole life so that would be quite spectacular safe and sound at Lockliness Marcus is right over there when I came here I was just welcomed into a warm apartment and got waffles and everything amazing amazing stuff now just gonna leave my lure here for a bit kind of gusting into the floor right now but during the night or during the evening it's gonna be turning so that's gonna work out pretty nice now let's see if uh, this will work out pretty nice <laughs> This is a little bit unstable. Would be unstable to do even in really calm weather. But I'm actually gonna be using my new rubber dinghy for the first time actually now after sailing more or less the whole coast of Norway. This is the first time that I'm gonna use my little dinghy better late than ever because they've taken away the this thing that goes to the mainland basically so I'm gonna put the dinghy next to the boat I can just pull myself to that floating dock over there there you have it aqua quick through 230 long seems pretty sturdy actually the air mat inside which creates some kind of V V form to the keel right here and uh, oh, seems pretty solid hard to tell when on land like this but so it's supposed to be pretty light as well, so I think I'm going to be able to handle it on my own. Although the first thing that I put this one into to inflate the boat, and then this little thing broke off right here. So aqua quick, that's just crap quality right there. No bueno. I've been rowing myself out a little bit on this pontoon, so now it's time to see if the little engine will start. I'm going to push us out here. And... Okay. Let's hope this will work out. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're off. Oh wow. We are off. I think we're pretty fast. Huh. Didn't expect it. Pretty loud. I'm gonna try and go around this loveliness island over here. I think we're doing about maybe maybe 10 knots right now actually. Yeah, I would say 10 knots. Now when we're turning with the wind, I think we're definitely gonna be doing 10 knots. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> this is way faster than I thought. We're definitely going faster than the waves. planing now so if I'm just sitting here and leaning as far forward as I possibly can then we're actually going I don't know how fast we're going now but definitely more than 10 minutes <laughs> first impression of the dinghy is um, actually really nice I feel like it's quite a sturdy dinghy still quite light and easy to maneuver and everything like that but it feels like the materials and the details and everything like that is um, actually quite thought through so i think yeah yeah actually should be pretty nice companion for this winter and next year and so on and so on going skiing fishing all kind of stuff like that and i'm really happy that i managed to get it to plane actually i think i reached like maybe like 12 13 knots or something like that top speed so that's actually really nice. A little bit of a safety thing actually to be able to go a little bit faster if that would be needed. So it's happy with the engine too, like really old two-stroke engine. Bought it for like 60 US dollars or something and it works like a treat. Just uh, one thing that I'm really not happy with that has to do with the rubber dinghy is these rings right here are not stainless. So they're actually rusting quite a lot and I mean I haven't had this thingy for more than a couple of months basically 
and they are already like badly rusting so I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be taking taking them off basically because having I mean they're, they're filling some kind of function of course keeping the dinghy in, in place but uh, it's just like rust like this is not something that should be on a boat in the first place. Like maybe if you're on a lake or something, possibly. But no, this um, this will just be taken away, all of them, and then I'll have to figure something else out. 